Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. I'm out here at the beach in the exact same spot I was almost four years ago when I filmed the video, The Perfect XJ, and I'm here to answer the question that everyone has been dying to know, is Black Beauty still the perfect XJ? I hope you'll agree with me now when I call this The Perfect XJ. All right, so as you guys know, I have a YouTube channel. It's been around for about four years now. Uh, this is one of the Jeeps that I feature on the channel that I call The Project. Uh, it's Black Beauty XJ. Uh, it's obvious why I named her Black Beauty, because she's black and she is beautiful. But this vehicle was special because I bought it when it had 88,000 miles. And now, let's see what kind of mileage we have four years later. Boom! Just 570 miles over 100,000. Oh yeah, not a lot of miles still on this baby. Again, just a tick over 100,000 miles. I filmed the video of when we went to 100,000 live in this bad boy as we went to get gas. Velvet ropes will part, champagnes fall from the heavens. There we go, guys. We did it. 100,000 miles, Black Beauty XJ. Yes, so if I got this thing, with 88,000 miles, that means we put just a tick over 12,000 miles on this thing in four years time. So this thing is very well taken care of. She is still a baby. She is still brand new. And uh, we'll walk around her. We can look at her a little bit and we'll compare how she is now to how she was four years ago. And uh, we'll see how she's holding up. First thing I did, was take apart everything off the undercarriage, took off the front end, the rear end, and I jacked it up, sandblasted the bottom, and I pour 15 the entire thing. It held up pretty good. So far, I think I stopped the rust in its tracks, but it's not without its battles, and I gotta keep going after it, grinding away the rust, and applying pour 15. I think it's the only way to save this thing. There she is, guys. She is still as clean as can be, well-maintained, still pretty shiny. I can still see myself in her. Hey, guys. I love this Jeep. I am so glad that it did not rot out on me. <laughs> if you remember, she was rusted when I got her. Here is how she held up. And here is the driver's side. Still pretty clean, still rust free for the most part. Now, sometimes you get a little flaking from time to time, sometimes from time to time. Pour 15, it's a difficult substance to work with. As you can see, I'm peeling a little bit of it right now. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with how it held up. Some more poor 15 peelings here. Usually happens on the seams. And you're gonna get your surface rust no matter what, but no rot. The floor pans are still mint. Ugh. Everything else is still rot free. Except for that drive shaft, that looks like crap. <laughs> and the muffler, you always have your issues with the exhaust but everything is really good and I'm very impressed with how it held up. So there she is on the bottom. Hey, while I'm down here, we'll go revisit these wheels and tires. These again are 2012 Dodge Challenger wheels. They're 18 inch wheels. They fit perfectly on this XJ with a three inch rough country lift. These are my Firestone Destination AT tires. The size is 265 60R18s, and they're wrapped in 265 60R18s. And they held up pretty good for being five years old. If you can see, we got a little bit of dry rot on them. It's not great, but this thing has never been garage kept, so it's been out in the elements for five years. Well, four years since I filmed the video. Uh, let's see, what, what was the date? September 2017, I think I had this bad boy on the road. So this thing has been in the weather, in the elements, and it's doing great. So uh, yeah, 
tires are still good. Let's take, you know what? Yeah, let's take a look at this tire over here. Now this tire, this tire was the spare tire for many, many years. It has a lot less tri rot on it as it should. And the rim looks damn near new. So there we go. That's a time capsule right there. I didn't rotate this tire in nearly as much as I should have. Only if uh, I got a flat and that was never. So <laughs> there we go. It's on there now and it's looking good. So that is the tires. What is next? Let's take a look at the paint. Here is the Black Beauty paint job. Still looking very, very clean. Very, very nice. But uh, if you get in really close, you can see a lot of imperfections. The clear coat, I'm sure, is just about done for. Um, you know, it's a 22-year-old vehicle. She's a 2000 Cherokee, so I'm pretty sure she has been in the sun her whole life. Um, I did do some paint correction. I buffed this up with my buddy Gabe. Ah, man, here's a ding. I think my kids uh, nailed the door with the door of another vehicle in my driveway. Hey, that's life. It happens. But yeah, uh, we did do some paint correction on this girl, and it came out just amazing at first. But you can only really do it once. The clear coat is old. Again, it's only a 2000, and I didn't want to just keep buffing away because uh, the first time around, I made a oopsie. I did a, a little burn, I guess. It showed up after a while. Not at first, but uh, it kind of went... Kind of went in too deep. So that is a big, big boo-boo. And uh, you can see it now. Um, sorry, Black Beauty. Uh, here we go. Here's another little ding right there. And we got tiny little clear coat cracks right up here in the molding. Again, none of this is extreme by any means. But uh, it's showing its age. Oh, I remember this ding. This was terrible. I just put this fender on. The other one had some rust spots under here. So I swapped this fender and dinged it in the process. I just dinged my new fender right down to the primer. Man, what a heartbreaker. But as you can see, this is my reflective pinstripe. I love this thing. It's black reflective. Oh, there you go. You can see it in the sun right now. It glows bright silver when direct light hits it. It's pretty cool. It gives it some accent color. And I brought it right down into here. I don't know if you can get this stuff anymore. It's 3M. It's a quarter inch pinstripe. It's hard to find now. But here we go. Back into my original lenses. I put the yellows back on and check out these LED lights. I got these free to do a video on it. To get these awesome headlights on, first thing I got to do is take off the old headlights, obviously, and I put on these textured bumper ends. Yeah, see that? These are the factory black bumper ends, the textured black. They are not the shiny painted ones. And I actually really like the way these came out. This textured bit of matte finish goes really good with the gloss. I like the contrast. And again, it covers some of the, uh, the fading from the buffing I did. Let's just say, like Bob Ross does, it was a happy little accident. Oh, there we go. Bumper looks good. Still got my fog lights. Let's see if I can find some more paint fading. Yep, here we go right here. A little bit of fading. I guess it was just a little too aggressive on the buffing wheel. What are you gonna do? Coming around on the rear, I had to match the front bumper ends, of course, so I put textured bumper ends on the rear. And check this out, I got a bed liner on the rear bumper to cover up all those scratches, you know, that you get from moving things in and out of the Jeep. There we go, there you can see the texture. Now it matches the bumper ends, it's nice and tough, doesn't scratch. I can always go over this as many times as I want to uh, touch up any more chips, more bumper ends, textured, back to the shiny trim, and around and around we go, looking really clean. No belt molding, because I hate it, it's disgusting. I like the pre-97 belt molding much better. Continuing on with the pinstripe, back to the grill. I still got my gloss grill in there. 
And here's the new addition. These are my grill lights. I got a nice video on that. All right, guys, check that out. That looks great. Again, my trusty old LEDs in the stock location. The stop sign is glowing like daytime, and that's about 700 feet still. You can see that all along this fence here, it's still lit up. And anything that's reflective within a thousand feet is going to be lit up. Moving up to the roof, as you can see, I got a little bed liner happy. I went ahead and I replaced the paint on this bed boy with some... Can you replace paint? I painted over. The faded clear coat, it had some fading, it had some chipping on the clear coat on the roof because again it was exposed to the elements. Went over it with the bed liner as well and I love the way this came out. It's really nice. You can see the textured, it's pretty cool. It's almost like it's gloss texture. So it's shiny, but it is, I don't know, it's cool, it's different. I don't like it. And here's one major difference you might notice. I have something on here that I don't like too much and it's textured right up here because, well, I removed my LED brake light. Why? I am saving that for my beach Jeep. I know I talk a lot about that vehicle and uh, I'll build it eventually one day. It's still uh, at home and I haven't done much but I did remove that from this and well I had to go ahead and bed liner over the glue so <laughs> here we go this is my bed liner roof right up to the drip guard and I think this came out pretty nice too I do like this a lot and adorable and uh, yeah there we go so we got a bed liner roof we got the textured bumper ends we got the textured valence down there everything matches and goes real well together I like it I like it a lot all right, that just about does it for the exterior. We're gonna move on to the interior now. I just wanna warn you guys, the next thing you see may shock you. No, not the factory wiper arm. I had the GMC Acadia wiper arm on this thing, and that plastic is so cheap. You have to replace the whole arm just about every time you replace the blade. So I was gonna do that in another video. I still might, but I just went back for the stock one for now. So here we go, on to the interior, ready? Here it is, guys. Black Beauty's interior is no longer black. She is mist gray. Look at it. Look at it. No more dark agate. I went with the two-tone color, and I really, really like it. Crazy, right, guys? Let's get a closer look. <laughs> yeah, baby. Here we go. We got manual seats with the mist gray cloth low back headrest seats can anybody remember where i got these seats from i'll give you two guesses no i won't i got these from alex billions xj this is one badass xj that's right this was alex billions interior i kept his seats when i gave him my leather seats from an 01 xj those were dark a gate leather he wanted them in i gave him a power passenger base with his power driver base and uh, i went ahead and kept these now why i put them in black beauty so last year a common problem happened one night it was freezing out I went to put on the heated seats and i got that flash error it was too cold and I didn't have time to mess with the whole heat seating element. So I popped these bad boys in and I really liked it. These are extremely, extremely comfortable. So what I did was I ended up rebuilding this whole bolster. I used padding from a passenger seat, got this thing nice and fresh, put a manual rack on it. The rest of the interior fell into place. I want a damn meat sandwich. Just kidding. All right, time for the interior check. We got the seats from Alex Billion, front and rear. These are looking so nice, so comfy, of course. We got the door panels. Here we go, the door cards. These were from Andy's XJ. Andy went ahead and found himself some limited door panels with the wood grain, so I put these on here. This is also Andy's center console. He wanted an A-gate center console to match his A-gate door cards. My change cup. And underneath? An emergency $20 bill. 
in case I run out of gas. We got my change cup back. It's the ashtray without the ashtray, no change cup. And one of you guys broke in here and stole my $20 bill and left me a chapstick. How dare you? <laughs> so that's just back to normal. I don't have any of the buttons for the heated seats because, well, they are not heated seats. And there's nothing going on in there. Just a simple stock smoke gray center console. Now the rest of the mist gray interior, like the glove box, all the kick panels, we got all the trim up here, the seat belt, all this stuff, uh, the back inner quarters, all of this stuff. That was from the Stimulus XJ. That interior was the Mist Gray, and uh, it was just sitting around doing nothing. So I figured I'd put that in to match, and uh, it came out really good. I was a little bored, I'm not going to lie, with the all black. The two-tone, it sets it off. I like it. I like it a lot. And here we go, here are my switches. We got the defrost and the rear wiper, of course, but I have the switches for the fog lights and for my grill lights. This is a custom piece printed out from uh, eBay. It's a 3D printer piece. And there's a guy, I'll leave the link in the description. You can hit him up, he'll make a custom piece for you. I did have to glue in my power outlet thingies. I epoxied them in because the hole was wider than stock. I made a custom fit. I got two power outlets. I really like the way this looks. It's clean looking, it's stock looking, and there we go. Let's see, what else do we have? Still got the overhead console, of course, and I can't even focus, there we go, on the roof because it is still black. Very nice black, clean headliner. We got the aftermarket speakers in there with aftermarket speaker grills and uh, just a very beautifully clean headliner. Dashboard was done with the chemical guys, ultra high shine. So that looks very, very clean. And here we have a stock steering wheel. I went back to the stock steering wheel because I wanted to keep my WJ wood grain steering wheel with the radio controls for Beach Jeep. I have a Beach Jeep thing going on right now where I'm trying to wire everything with uh, WJ computers. It's uh, very confusing. I don't understand it just yet, but trust me guys, it's gonna look great. Uh, so there we go. This is the whole dash. Very clean factory looking stock. I still got a Pioneer head unit in there. And uh, that's that for the front. The rear, still very clean. Um, I did take out a lot of parts, clean them up, and put them back in when I did the interior swap. Let's see, not sure if you guys can see this. There, there we go. That is the painted black floor. It is still gorgeous. That is poor 15, no rot in there whatsoever. Of course, we got nice clean painted seat brackets. Nothing in here is rotten, all clean, all nice. Still got these rain guards, of course. These are one of my favorite features on the XJ because it does cover a lot of the chipped pieces out here on this window trim. As you know, I did a window trim video. It was one of my first videos. These are painted, but if you guys wanted to hide that little silver spot that chips up here, go ahead and get these rain guards. You're good to go. And uh, yeah, here's another look at the interior from the back. Again, all matching mist gray all around. And of course the spare. I do not have my cargo carrier here right now. That is also going towards my police Jeep. I could fit all cool police related stuff in there like flares, pillows, and let the record show that little thing was not a rubber butt, it was a neck pillow. Thank you guys. We still have the factory spot right here for our factory spare, but these big 32-ish tires won't fit, so I just left it laying right there. And of course, the matching mist gray liftgate trim with the liftgate handle, looking very nice. One other thing I did uh, to go along with the gray interior was I put on the Ultrastar wheels from good old General Grievous. I went back to the stock wheels on General Grievous. General Grievous is no longer with us. I sold it in original condition to our good friend Joe Graven. But uh, that craze has passed. I still wanted it to look like a black beauty on the outside, so I went back to the black wheels. 
So there we go. Let's pop the hood. Look under the engine bay. Yeah, beautiful. Look at this, guys. Still got a working factory headlight. How many people can say they still have that? Black Beauty does. All right, guys, the engine bay. Everything in here is clean. It is just about 100% factory. Every nut and bolt is original. Uh, this battery is 221, almost two years old. It's a Walmart Everstart. I junked all those garbage Optima batteries. They are terrible. 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 terrible, terrible. 119 this should still be considered new but even this battery showed signs of failure now it's time for the battery itself again walmart ever start battery this baby has got there we go 800 cold cranking amps and 985 cranking amps so walmart it is so this is a new battery uh i just changed the oil this thing has a new starter and uh let's see what else i did the four hole injectors a while ago it's got a nice smooth idle maybe a little bit more horsepower and i wrapped the fuel rail in heat tape just trying to do my best to prevent that heat soak just trying to do my best to prevent the heat soak Here's another look from the driver's side, and as I go through, I'm trying to think of things I did to it. I can't really recall anything recently because I did everything when I first got this, like the uh, thermostat, I did the water pump, all that when I first got it. Everything is just in working condition, low miles, uh, except the AC. That uh, <laughs> doesn't work too well. I charge it every spring, and by the fall, it's blowing warm again. So I just, ugh, Jeep ACs, I just can't be bothered with it right now. So. <laughs> I, that's probably the only thing that doesn't work on this vehicle is the AC. This windshield is broken. This, it kept going down and out of sight. And it kept passing inspection, so uh, I never had to change it. So this is kind of a, a badge of honor. Such an old crack, not needing replacement. All right, so here we are looking at a Rough Country 3-inch lift. I did this when I first got the vehicle. It's been great. I haven't had any problems. The only thing I replaced after that was the track bar. I did get a newer Rough Country adjustable track bar because I felt a little clunk. Where is it? Up there in the bracket. That bracket was clunking a little bit, so I replaced the track bar again just to avoid the death wobble. I have not had death wobble in this vehicle, but I have had it in the past in other vehicles, and you don't want it again, trust me. I've done this. You don't want this. Okay, here's one thing I recently did. Put in a newer alternator not too long ago, and just below it, I got the trans lines. I did new trans lines and a trans line video. So I got these in. Looking good. Now I'm just going down the line and I am replacing these old junky ones with the new ones as I go. Coming further along, I did the starter. Uh, that's a new starter. It kind of looks like crap actually, but uh, it is new, believe it or not. There we go. Got it. Starter is connected. And there is my trans pan, new gaskets, nice new paint job. That came out great gonna have to clean all this stuff up clean this up i'll get back to you when this stuff is uh all nice and clean trans oil pan i cleaned this up painted it everything seems to be maintaining it's not getting better but it ain't getting worse and here is the undercarriage from the rear nothing crazy nothing rotten it's maintaining looking good uh, except for this exhaust <laughs> the exhaust always falls off look at this blob of weld right here Oh well, Long Island Jeeps, what are you gonna do? All right, well I got the hood open, might as well start her up. This baby still purrs like a kitten. 100,000 miles, it should, right? There we go. Man, I absolutely love that sound. No ticking, no knocking, no banging, no clunking. Just a smooth 4.0, best sound in the world. So it's getting dark enough where you can see the interior lights. These are LEDs, those look good. Uh, coming over here, I got LEDs down there for the climate control. 
I kind of got a matching theme going on with the orange and the blue for the LEDs up there. Looks good. Of course, we got my four lights right here. Turn on my fogs. You can check them out. There we go. Those are some nice, crisp, bright lights. You don't even need the fog lights and the off-road lights. These headlights are bright enough as it is. Let me pop on the flashers. Hazards on. And now the daytime running lights blink yellow. Pretty cool. Standard stock tail lights, nothing special. Dan H sticker, of course. Right, guys i think that's about it you guys know all there is to know about the black beauty xj i love this jeep very very much you can see there how the sun is setting on it oh it looks so good but as the sun sets right here on this very xj the sun also may be setting metaphorically on my ownership of this thing see i think i might have to put this up for sale i don't really want to but this thing, it's, it's perfect, right? It's the perfect XJ. It's the perfect XJ for me anyway. But uh, it, it's only going to get worse. It's only going to decay. It's going to rust. You know, the Bible says don't store up your treasures on earth where the moth could eat and the thief could steal and the rust will eat it away, especially where I live. Uh, I, I can build a perfect XJ, to be honest. I built another Black Beauty, Rec J, for my father. Uh, I'm building beach jeep, cut two jeeps in half, stuck them together. Uh, I really want to build that. And I have the police model XJ that's sentimental to my family. So I, I don't want to let this thing rot in my driveway. Uh, I, I'd like to have somebody take care of it, maintain it like I did. And maybe it's time for this thing to, uh, to move on. I hate goodbyes. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen. So. Uh, I think I'll close this out. Thank you again, Black Beauty. This is the Perfect XJ Take 2 video. Um, the first one got 600,000 views. I uh, got 10,000 thumbs up. I got a whole bunch of likes, many, many thousands of likes. I'd like for that video to get a million views. That video put me on the map. So maybe uh, this part two will kick that one up a notch too. But. Uh, that's it, man. It is a glorious evening. I'm going to enjoy my evening. I'm going to enjoy my evening in it and uh, take it for a nice drive now. So uh, that's it, guys. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next project. Peace.